Your mean mom is... Ah! Today I will be... What is this? Oh, that's my brush. Today I will be showing you... Um, we'll be getting ready in 1780 style. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my stays on because if I don't do it now, I might as well just stop recording. So, as everything in my life, these are still not finished. Not because I'm lazy, but because I was on the edge of a mental breakdown when I had to make these. You have no idea how annoying that is. Like, I could barely hold myself from screaming. So the stays that I have are 1780s style based on Nora Woha. I modified the pattern a bit because I wanted a front lacing as well so it makes it a bit easier for me to get into those. But I didn't really think about how lazy I am and I, I still don't feel like I'm doing the whole thing so I still have to kind of push through those. They're also a bit too big. Uh, so now that I have told you everything that's wrong about those, let me try and put those on. So originally those would be boned with either like whale boning or reed, but obviously it's modern time, we don't do whale boning anymore. Uh, we just kill them with plastic bags instead. <laughs> so I just used um, zip ties or whatever you call those, uh, as I always do. And it's okay, I mean the pattern is a bit weird because usually if you have a corset or stays, you know, the pieces with, without boning are kind of narrow, but here you have this like whole big triangle that's without boning and honestly it's a bit odd because my boobs kind of fall into that spot and I don't think that should be happening, so I might as well be adding some boning here, even though it's probably not historically accurate, just so that does not happen and I don't have to worry about where my boobs are at the moment. As previously, I will be talking about boobs a lot in this video. Uh, so yeah, this bit is still unfinished. <sighs> this is why you had a maid. <laughs> oh my god, why does it keep... Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Why is no one home to help me? Okay, I got this. I got this. Not that bad. I'm okay. Woo! Okay, so what do we do now? What is this? What happened was I altered the pattern myself and I kind of didn't think through some things. So for example, this piece here has like horizontal boning and I didn't think about how, would, how that would close because there isn't really a spot where you could put like holes, so I was like, yes, we're just gonna leave it open and then all my boobs fell down and uh, that didn't work so I had to <laughs> sneakily find a way to like poke a hole through the boning never again so again, I need to take those out manually I'm, I'm wearing my shift by the way, I don't know if I told you that or if you just thought that's kind of a white weird dress. But no, that's sh that's shift, which was used in 18th century mainly. It was used by everybody basically and it was because you didn't want to get your clothes dirty and instead you had like a couple of shifts that you could just wash continuously. And you know, it was very useful if you were kind of poor and couldn't really afford to like wash your clothes too often. It's not like they washed them super often though because it's 18th century, but if you didn't want to stink you needed a couple of shifts. Okay, the last time I, I did this, it wasn't that time. <laughs> Guess the ice cream is showing. So see here, we have kind of a problem because it's supposed to be like that. And it is not. <laughs> okay, we'll worry about that later. Let's focus on this first. So sometimes when the string doesn't really want to come through the hole, I just use a simple bobby pin, like the kind of the ones that have like flat fronts and I just put the string through and I just go through the uh, holes like this sort of like in using a needle except it's not a needle it's a bobbin pin yeah that's pretty much the same coloring up this is what I don't really like about 18th century stays because in Victorian corsets it's way easier to just snap them on pull the ties and it's kind of there whereas with this thing because they they laced it in a different way, you would basically have to no. See how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. Why does this keep happening? You would basically have to spend 
fair amount of time just putting the string through. I'm actually glad I also did this before makeup because all of my foundation would be on the inside of those stays. I don't know why I feel like singing Fergalicious whenever I put my corset on. Fergalicious definition. <gasps> no, the wrong way. Uh, why can't I just hire someone to do it for me? Preferably someone cheap. Why? Why does this keep happening to me? What have I done to you, you stupid plastic string? So in the in the 18th century, basically if you were not a prostitute, you would always wear your stays. Even like the low class people were usually expected to wear stays. Okay, so this bit here, we have a special piece of string for that. The bobage is here. So let's move on to makeup. My favorite part, as you all know. So uh, should I actually, should I cover myself up? Because this is a bit weird. You know, you know what, I'm just gonna pull it up. So my makeup is mostly inspired by Barry Lyndon, uh, which obviously is a movie, so it's not like 100% historically accurate, but I guess it's like a cool interpretation of what they wore and how they fa their faces look on the paintings. I really need to do my eyebrows, man. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my favorite sunscreen, which is by a Polish brand, and it saves my life and it makes me look like a vampire in a summer and that's the kind of paleness I aspire to so it kind of gives your face this little like a white tint and it looks really cool if you put makeup on because it's not like in your face white face paint in your face <laughs> it gives you this like pale background if that makes sense probably does not and also 1780s is kind of the time where makeup wasn't that over the top. If you look at the paintings, especially at the British paintings that I'm kind of more, more inspired by than French, ladies look, they just look kind of natural, like it's not too much. Also, if you were wondering, if you've noticed that my videos are a bit less frequent lately, it's because I'm working on something big and every time I shoot a video I'm kind of feeling guilty about not working on it. And also, the camera does not deal well with the only card I have left and I've lost all of my other memory cards. And you know, the last time I was like, cause, cause what happens is the only card I have, I have left, it kind of t tends to switch off every like 20 seconds. So whenever I talk, I have to be careful not to talk over 20 seconds cause it's gonna die. But the last time I was like, well, you know, I can deal with that. I'll just have to check it every time and you know, I'm pretty sure people will not notice that I'm looking away. And then... Well, so now I stole my sister's cards, but apparently it's really slow and my camera was like, I'm not working with that. So I'm also gonna put it on my... Clavonged. <laughs> no, you're not finished. You're not done yet. So the thing about 18th century is that the stays are actually quite comfortable. They're not too crazy and they're actually way more comfortable than let's say mid-victorian corsets obviously after a couple of hours nothing that is tight around your body is comfortable and you probably know that if you've ever worn a bra so pretty much the same feeling you just want to get it off i like this foundation but i hate the way it comes out because it's always like there's nothing here there's nothing here and then you push it too hard and it's like Sort of like the later days of your period. What 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 plans do you guys have for summer? Anyone is coming over to Poland? I hope not, because there is way too many tourists in my city. I'm oh, just kidding. It's always been like that, so I'm kind of used to it by now. Like when I go out in like August, I don't really expect myself to be able to go through the city center. There's just too many people. Well, I kind of like it though. For selfish reasons, obviously, yeah, because I'm like, so many people want to see my hometown, but also because it's it kind of like, it makes the city really vibrant. Okay. Probably can't see anything. I just realized I didn't zoom in or anything and it's super dark, but. Next up is Le Blush. So, Again, kind of the same as in the Regency one I was doing. I'm not applying the blush this way, I'm kind of applying it in really wide circles. Okay, so now I'm gonna apply the blush on my eyelids. So the makeup is actually pretty much the same as I did in the Regency video. So fixing it with the dark, what's the name of it? Eyeshadow. I'm just gonna draw 
a simple line around where my eyelashes are. Moving on to my eyebrows. Eyebrow one. Done. Eyebrow two. Done. Eyelashes. Just a little bit so they don't completely disappear. Done. Lipstick. So again, I'm using the very same lipstick I used for the Regency one. It could actually be a tiny bit stronger for this look because because I say so. I probably could use more blush. Oh my god. Oh no. This is this is what I was trying to avoid. No! I look like someone hit me in the face. Okay, let's just try and make it symmetrical. You know what? I might just turn the saturation down on the video and you probably wouldn't be able to tell I look like a clown. Hair! So, it's kind of complicated. Mainly because I'm aiming for like an early, like late 1770s, early 1780s look. So I have no idea what I was just talking about because the cards got full and I had to go to my computer and transfer the recordings to my computer because it was full. So now it's empty but I have no idea what I was just saying. I hope you do understand the struggles I have to go through to make a single video. Moving on, let's just do some hair. It's a beautiful day outside. As always, when I'm filming, it's bloody sunny. What I was probably saying was that I was inspired by this particular painting where even though it was made in 1784, the lady is wearing a more like 1770s hairstyle. So actually, no, they probably wore those in 1780s as well. Now that I'm thinking of it, 1784 is probably a time she would still wear this. So it is going to be a bit complicated because I'm gonna use two hair pieces for this and the first one is gonna be this beautiful <laughs> sack which is basically a wig. It's it's a wig, wig that I use for my hedgehog hairstyle that's actually not in the best condition right now. So I'm just gonna use it as a hair rat. I put it in a hair net and I'm just gonna use it as a hair, hair rat. So in order to do so, I need to cover my face, so you probably wouldn't be able to see me um, a few minutes, so just in case you panic, I'm still here. Don't worry, I am still here. Just a face. So I'm putting this on my head, and I'm putting it... I, I used to put it sort of here, and it... <laughs> It's hilarious, I can't believe I'm doing this right now, it's so weird. So basically I used to put it in like on my forehead, but then it would be a bit um, too full at the front and also my hat would not fit so instead I'm just pulling it slightly backwards and I'm just gonna pin it in place with bobby pins. So when I was doing this hairstyle for a picnic I used so much bobby pins you have no idea I actually took a photo of it I might include it in the video if, I, if I'm able to find it because I was so afraid my hat is gonna slide off because I made the hat following what the lady was wearing in the painting but I didn't really think about the fabric I'm using and it turned out the fabric was a bit too heavy. Oh, that looks great. And this is how you achieve a 1780s hairstyle. We're done, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. So I was so afraid it's, go it's, gonna, it's all gonna come off and I was preparing for a like, historical picnic that we had with our friends and, uh, and I was like, I really don't want my hairstyle to be ruined, so I put so many bobby pins. <laughs> and also the hair piece I'm gonna be using for the back of my head is also quite heavy because it's like a long wig that I pinned up. No, why am I why am I trying to use like normal pins I use for my clothes? So I was like I was trying to keep it secure and stuff, but it was just a bit too much. On the plus side though, it did survive the whole picnic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tease each section then spray it, then pin it in place. And I'm just gonna keep pinning it so it kind of overlaps. And then when I'm left with like too much hair at the top, I'm just gonna roll it in, in a single roll. So it doesn't have to be like super stiff or anything. It's just so it holds better and it doesn't like fall off your head. So another good thing about using a, ha a hair net for my hair rut. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> is that I can pin bobby pins to it and it doesn't affect it at all. Boy, look at this. I actually look kind of 1960s right now, like the, the Egyptian style they had. So the good thing is you don't have to use curling iron for this hairstyle, which saves me 
almost burning my scalp as I did the last time. That was probably the most entertaining part of the video, by the way, so I'm kind of sad I'm missing out on that this time, but... So if you if your hair is really long, you could probably leave some of it around here and then like roll it and do those like side rolls and then roll it at the back, but because my hair is way too short for a proper 18th century hairstyle, I'm just gonna put it all up and then I'm gonna use a, a hairpiece for my back. Hello, baby boy! Baby boy! They like you! I don't they, care. They just, I just want to show you so I get more views and subs. Using me for your profit, huh? Not really good at PR, are you? Wait till I sue you for animal abuse. The back is always kind of problematic, but that is true for like every single historical hairstyle I've done. And actually, now that I'm thinking of it, you probably are not able to see the top of my head anyway. I, I, I can only imagine how much it must have sucked if you're like a rich lady in the 18th century. If someone comes to your house at like 6 a.m. and they're like, your best friend is dying and you have to visit her. You're like, sure, just give me three hours till I'm ready and we can go. You know, on the top of my head, there is a, a lot of crap. It's still, it's still out of frame. Oh my goodness, what am I supposed to do with this? So... It's 11 a.m. and if I want to leave my house today, and I have to because I need to go to the post office, I'm gonna have to spend an hour undoing this and then I, I'll have to wash my hair so I can actually leave the house. What has my life become? Ugh. I look, I, I legit look like an onion right now. Now, if you're wearing a cap, you probably don't have to worry about the back of your head anyway, so you don't have to keep doing what I'm gonna be doing, but because I'm gonna be wearing a hat where the back is probably the only part of my hair that you're gonna be able to see, I'm just putting all of the hair that is left on the top of my head into a roll, sort of, into like a horizontal roll. Okay, that's decent enough, I guess. I'm gonna keep it under a hat anyway. That's what I keep telling myself whenever something doesn't really work. So now, here is my hair piece. It's not the best. I did three rolls on the side, then I pinned up the rest of the hair, and then did another another roll. Uh, this is based off of a, like fashion plates from the era. Quite messy because it was used at a picnic already and didn't take it well. So I'm putting it under the roll I just made and my top priority is trying to make it stay on my head. I actually discovered there's there's still a hairpin here so I'm just gonna take it out. Cause... So I'm trying to figure out where the middle is and I'm pinning it right underneath the top roll I just did. So because it's quite heavy to secure it I have to use a, an obscene amount of pins to make it stay on my head. So here is what it looks like from the side, here is what the back looks like, here is what the other side looks like. Oh, it's already falling off, I can feel it falling off. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with a dry shampoo to make it a little bit more grey, but I'm not going to tear in my hair completely grey. You know how people are always like, I'm using this product because I love the texture and the price is alright, and then um, it's the best quality that I could get, and I'm just like, I'm using this because it smells nice. <laughs> I have it in my eyes right now. <laughs> mm. Everything is white here. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to wash my hair after this. Le hair is done. Let's move on to clothing. We're just gonna have a couple more items that I have not finished. For example, this beautiful bum pad. This is what they wore on their butts to make their butts look bigger. Sounds familiar? So this one looks like pierogi <laughs> and it's basically you just wear it around your waist like this and it should be tied with strings that I do not possess, so instead I'm just gonna pin it in place with a pin. Here's the bum pad. Next up is a petticoat. My petticoat is in a really bad state, so instead I just stole my sister's petticoat. The way you put them on is a bit odd, because it has slits on sides of the skirt, and basically you have to tie your back first and then your front. I'm gonna show you. Here is the back. So I tie the back in place. And here is the front, and I tied that around my waist as well. So here's the really cool thing about this. 
is that because you have slits on the sides, it actually allows you, where is it? <laughs> it actually allows you to wear pockets under the, the skirt. Um, the pockets were basically like small embroidered bags with slits, but it was kind of cool because they didn't have bags back then. They just had pockets and it seems like a really convenient way to hide a lot of things. Another petticoat is tied exactly the same way. It's also a super mysterious petticoat because I am 100% sure I did not make it and it somehow made it to my house. Probably been left by someone that was sleeping at my place after a ball or something, but I 100% I am sure I have not made it. Okay, so both petticoats are on right now. I'm gonna pull my boobs back up. Also, what I haven't mentioned is that I'm also wearing um, tights. They're not stockings, they're tights. Yes, again, I've cheated a bit, but I don't own that many stockings and the, one I, the ones I have are kind of in a miserable condition right now because I've been wearing them all the time, so... And also because I have white shoes, I decided to wear dark tights instead. So I have this little nice contrast. Hi, I'm still here, can you hear me? So the dress is made of two parts, the underskirt and the overskirt together with the bodice. I'm gonna put the underskirt first. And yet another thing I have not finished. As you can see, I have a little problem with waistbands because this one, again, doesn't have a waistband. So the way you put the skirt on is pretty much identical to the way I put the petticoats on, so you put the back on first and then the front. So the skirt might might use some ironing, but um, I don't have time to iron it properly. And also it's kind of strictly accurate. Okay, ha, you thought that this is over. There is plenty more to come. The main piece is the dress. Again, I have not finished it, but then I decided actually I can just pretend it's supposed to be that way because Sometimes, in the 18th century, they would not have front closing. Guess who's back? Yeah, I know it smells weird. Because what they would do is they... <laughs> they would just close the front with pins. And that's a perfectly historically accurate, very convenient. <laughs> so yeah, let me just put this on. So this is the dress, but that's not the end yet. That's just the very beginning. I need a couple more props now. Oh, I was I was sitting on a on a hanger this whole time. So first of all, we need those babies covered. So I'm gonna use a fichu. So you can either tuck it inside the dress like so. But the the lady on the portrait I'm basing this look off actually has the fichu pinned outside the dress so that's what I'm gonna do with that little help of my mirror so this is the fish however you call it that was supposed to cover both your back and the neckline and another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little cross on because that's kind of what they wore uh, the lady on the painting doesn't have it but I was like I really want a cross next thing the lady on the painting has a bow attached to the center front and I thought it looks quite cute, so I made one myself. So another thing... Oh, I forgot my shoes, actually. So these are the shoes I'm wearing. They're absolutely not historically accurate, but I needed something last minute. And I'm still saving up money to get some Amer American Duchess shoes, but so far the money I have been s saving was spent otherwise. The shape is absolutely not historically accurate, especially if you look at the heel but I was like the dress is long so then I decorated those with pieces of fabric that I got left over from the dress okay so ooh! <laughs> I forgot how hard it is to bend in stays okay one more thing is I mean one of the many more things to come is a tiny watch that I have it's not an antique watch it's just like a really really cheap China made watch that I'm gonna attach at my waist on one side. I've seen it on portraits and I think it's quite cute. I don't really get why sometimes they would wear two watches. I genuinely have no idea but there probably is some reason behind it that I am not aware of because I suck at 18th century so. So the hat is based on a painting as well but what I didn't think about is that it's gonna be really heavy. I'm having some hard time trying to make it stay on my head.
So obviously those two ribbons help a lot when it comes to trying to make it stay on my head. I am not sure where to attach the ribbons though because... Oh no, it's... No, don't fall! Don't fall! So annoying! Come on! Uh, because on the picnic I did it, I think, too low and it kind of looks like I'm just wearing a messy bun or something because you can't see my elaborate hairstyle that I worked so hard on, so uh, it's not ideal. But what I've noticed on the on the painting, the lady uh, wears the hat quite low on the forehead. You can barely see her eyebrows, so that's what I was kind of aiming for. But then you're getting really close to... <laughs> like, the hat could just fall on your face, and that's not what you want. So the last thing I'm doing is... I have those black mittens uh, because what happened was I was based I, I was trying to copy the, the painting and the lady actually has long sleeves and because the sleeves were short on the pattern I was using I was like I'm not comfortable enough to try and make them longer on my own because I did this once and it didn't work and they were all like in the wrong directions and, and, and stuff so I was like I'm just gonna make short sleeves and a pair of mittens because I kind of always like this look so that's what I did and they're absolutely rubbish but because they're black you can't see that they're not made well again because I don't know anything about 18th century, I had no idea why they chose to wear mitts instead of normal gloves. And also, yes, I do have my nails done because that was the first time since December that I have done my nails and it was yesterday and I woke up today and I was like, do I have to undo my nails for the video? But no, because I don't care about you, I don't care what you think. Deal with it. This is it, I think. I'm gonna try move the camera back a bit and show you the whole outfit. It will not be easy because my room is quite tight, but we did it the last time, so we might as well try it this time. Hope you guys enjoyed this hilarious video of mine. <sighs> Subscribe or don't. I don't I don't really know if like does it do anything. I can't I can't get up. I can't get up.